All right, friends. Um, so this is the uh, white Freightliner. There we go. It's this one. Yeah, this is the uh, initial uh, phase of the build. Getting the motor together. This is it. Primer color on it, just a primer gray. Just uh, kind of let me see what we're looking at here. Now at this point, if you were going to do some detailing, um, adding a plug harness, uh, ignition wiring harness, and maybe some other bits and pieces, a little bit of plumbing. Uh, this would be the point where you would probably want to do that. Just start drilling holes for the ignition wiring, maybe mount a distributor cap on there somewhere. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we're not we're not doing that for this build. This is just going to be basic out of the box. Uh, then the ladder frame is the next assembly. Here you can see the motor. The exploded view of the engine, how it goes together. Uh, let me see, was there anything tricky about this or... No, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing I would suggest is putting the two end uh, rocker arm covers on first. They're the ones that are notched out and then that tells you basically where to put the center one. But since it's all covered um, by the uh, air box, um, you know, it's, it's it's really moot. You could actually leave this one off if you wanted to. No difference there. Um, as, you, as you can see, you can't see it unless you tilt the engine upside down almost. Alright, so there's the motor assembly. Uh, and then the ladder frame, uh, if we orient it to the drawing, it would be this way. All right. And again, this was also um, pretty straightforward to the drawing. The only thing was on the uh, assembling these cross members here, these little brackets. It can go one of two ways. This is the long side on the top, and this is a shorter side on the bottom. You want to make sure the short side is hanging down and that you're connecting in here the wider tabs in here. And even with that, you have to cut these lower tabs in half. And I just nip them off with that on a straight line. And that allows them to fit inside of the uh, lower rail. Right, so the top just snugly up underneath the top rail and the, this tab just inside of the lower rail. And again, you gotta, you have to trim to get that. So that was about it. There was nothing uh, tricky. The placement of, of these radius rods just from this drawing, you can't really see where they're supposed to go. Um, but this is how they mount. Uh, the larger end goes to the frame, not to the um, leaf spring. And then uh, this end here just butts up against this flange on the front of the rear axle, and that, that's how those go on. At least that's how I that's how I put them on. I don't want them falling off, and that had the best contact surface amount, so that's what I did. Um, keeping the build square is not as difficult with this one as some others because of the locking tabs that these have these at the, across the top here can't really see it in the drawing but there are two uh, tabs that these locate onto on both sides and that helps get that square but what you really want to do is and the cab uh, holders go on last these two small pieces here, these, these these do attach separately. They're not molded in, which is good, because that allows you to keep the frame flat on your uh, work surface to help keep everything from getting twisted as you're assembling it. And what you want to do to make sure it's square is use the right angled lines on your drawing for reference. So if we line up this rail on this line, then we line up the axle 
you know, the front um, engine mount cross member here. So we get this lined up here, and this should fall right on this line, and then move it over, and again, you've got a straight line, a, a right angle here where the axle, uh, front axle is. And just right down the line, you just, you just want to keep everything straight and square. Again, if we line up this rail, get our, our axles, make sure they're square to the frame, and then uh, the trailing piece is square to the frame. So, you know, use, the, use what you've got available to you to keep everything square. If you've got one of those building mats with the one inch grid, you know, that use that to help keep everything square so that you're not getting this. If you get a little twist and, and a little bit of, uh, you know, not squareness, um, then when you go to put wheels on your uh, truck, they're going to be catawampus. And you don't want that. So uh, this is simple tools, simple simple methods to keep everything square. Use these lines. You know, they are drawn at right angles if you want to check it and make sure. <clears throat> get a builder square and check the lines yourself and you'll see that's a 90 degree angle right and it, they're all 90 so you know use what's available to you get everything lined up nice and square don't just guess or go by eye I mean if you've got a good eye that's great but you know always always check all right, so that's how we get the frame built. Um, and if you want to know order of assembly on this, uh, I did stick uh, the front cross piece, the uh, engine mount first. And then these assemblies were made. Again, these were done, attached here. And then the, when you dry fit that, you want to check and make sure that that does fit inside of the two rails, top and bottom here. Uh, and then those are applied and then again you're doing that as you're lining it up laying it flat on the table Again, these are the last parts that you attach to this I think they have it in the assembly as uh, step 17 um, which is probably good yeah that's after everything so uh, if you do this in order you should be okay in this instance and then this allows you with with those off as you're assembling all of these parts to keep everything flat to the tabletop and again that helps to keep from getting this kind of twist uh, in this in this direction you don't get you don't get twist so if you can sight right down the, the front of this and I don't know if I have the angle right let's take a look all right I don't know if that helps but you can see that everything should be straight and square right down the line Okay, that's the idea anyway. And then now uh, with the cab, so remember this had a three piece cab, a rear plate and two halves. And getting the two halves together was not that big a deal. Um, you know, careful s flat sanding to make sure that we get a, a two good um, edges, mating surfaces, mating edges, and then uh, the careful alignment of the two pieces and then the back plate went in last uh, this is with one application of filler and sanding you can see some of the detail unfortunately is coming off where we have to sand through here to get the seam flat some of the rivet detail is lost and on this side probably a little bit less severe than anywhere else um, and we still have a line here, which to my mind is not a bad thing. Um, these cabs would have been assembled to each other. Uh, I don't know that the top would have been in two sections, um, but certainly the sleeper cab was an addition to the yard truck. Um, so I'm probably, and, I, and there's, a, there's some chrome that goes here. Um, let's see if we have that illustration again. Okay. 
pictorial. There we go. So we've got we've got chrome here. That's probably going to be close, if not over this line. And as far as the top goes, I can do another application of filler and just see where that gets us. If I end up taking off all of this rivet detail, then you know, so be it. Uh, and then down here, you know, one more application. So I'm thinking we'll, we'll try one more, and I'll just show you what I do to keep the filler from getting all over the place. So it's just like if you were going to paint, you don't want the paint to go everywhere if you're painting stripes. And so masking tape will work to keep the filler localized. In fact, I think I want to go a little closer than that. Yeah, we're okay, no dust. So we'll get in a little tighter to the line. There we go. And just press it in pretty good. You don't want too much over the top because pulling the tape around this radius will cause it a swing one way or the other and I don't want to have a different line there. Alright, same here, we're going to stay with that line we have right there and just go straight across, hopefully straight across. again so we don't get it done with. The back edge doesn't matter um, obviously because we're applying this by hand I'm not spraying filler. I'm just going to apply it. And I think this application of the filler will be wet. The other was dry straight from the bucket and I think if I do add a little bit of water and it's actually a, a white glue and water mixture And uh, <clears throat> the reason for that is that it works as a hardening agent. I'm just using spackle as filler. Uh, it's the non-shrink Sherwin-Williams product and it, believe it or not, it works just fine with a plastic kit. And it's real easy to, uh, to manage. All right, so you see, I just want to fill the seam. I don't want filler getting all over, the, all over town. And that helps me localize the sanding a little bit, even though we did kind of get a little wild with it. That's good. fold this over so it's not sticking everywhere. Okay. There. Alright, you see how we're uh, getting a nice tight line? Just uh, localized to the seam, not all over the place. Um, not all over town. I'm just going to get a little bit of water. Don't ask me what the ratio is, I have no idea. Um, it's just a little bit of white glue to this, not, not even that much. And I don't want much water doesn't take much to uh, emulsify this filler. Try a different Yeah, this one's better. Yeah, 
these little sp spatulas, they come with uh, some of the um, paintbrush, like if you buy a, a bag of paintbrushes, uh, there's a couple manufacturers out there that um, <coughs> supply the brushes with a, some of these um, spatulas for mixing paint on a uh, palette. That's, we'll probably have too much water here. Pour some of this off. Now probably what I really needed was about two drops of water, not a quarter of a cup. But if I get the right consistency here, uh, it should apply really nicely and sink into that gap that I'm trying to fill. And then when it hardens, there's this shrink-free um, spackle paste. Sherwin-Williams. Uh, it should ride high and and cover even as I'm sanding. So that's the hope, anyway. So we want this to be kind of like a heavy paste. And then we just want to get it it around you'll be able to see if there's any low spots if you don't want any low spots not know where not know how just get that filled 